Hi, and welcome to the 11th video in our PowerShell 7.2 for beginners tutorial series. Uh, so we've gone over quite a bit, pretty much everything that you really need to know for programming in PowerShell. This last video is really to show you guys the different types of modules that we can find on our computer, uh, to show where you would install modules, how to import modules, um, and how to install and download modules from the PowerShell Get repository. So let's actually, and let's get started with that here. So the first part is really knowing where your different modules are going to be installed. And there is an environment variable that actually tells you that information. So let's actually go ahead and let's take a look at that. So for an environment variable, uh, we've seen this on a quick tip. We've also seen already um, an environment variable in these tutorials as well um, for the computer name and uh, for a vast amount of other uh, options, like the PowerShell version will also be in the environment variable. Um, but we have a PS module path. And if we actually run this here, we will actually get a list of directories that our modules can be installed in that we can easily go fetch them from. Now this list does look a little rough um, because they are separated by semicolons. They're not really like a nice list. Um, but if you have issues reading this list, uh, here's a little tip. You can actually wrap this environment variable here in a variable wrapper. So just the dollar sign, open and close parentheses, and then your environment variable. And just do a dot split, and then open and close parentheses, and then a pair of single quotes or double quotes. Uh, and inside the quotes, just put the semicolon. And if you run this now, we actually get a nice list of directories here that will tell us where the modules are installed. Uh, so by default, you'll have one in your user uh, documents folder. And then you'll have, if you've installed PowerShell 7, uh, which I'm assuming you have following these tutorials, um, you'll usually have this PowerShell 7 modules folder in your program files. You'll also have just a PowerShell in program files another one with Windows PowerShell, which is going to be your PowerShell uh, 5.1. And then you'll also have one in your uh, Windows System 32 uh, Windows PowerShell modules as well. And then because we have VS Code, we also have one in the VS Code folder of our user. Um, so there's a bunch of different spots that you can install modules on. Uh, now, I actually, uh, for work uh, and for uh, my personal computer, I install or I copy a lot of my modules into the System32 folder or into the Program Files folder. Uh, very rarely will I only install a module for a specific user because um, oftentimes I'll like test uh, different users on my computer. Uh, so it's definitely handy to have them for everyone. But those are the paths that your modules will get installed at. Now, the first uh, commandlet that you need to know for modules is going to be the get module commandlet. So that would just be get dash module. And this will actually get you the modules that are currently loaded in your session. Um, so these are all the default modules that should be loaded in your session currently. Uh, they are the very basic like add content, like the PowerShell management. So you can add content, clear content, a bunch of different commandlets in here. Uh, you'll have the security commandlet, which will be able to do like secure strings, uh, like convert from and to secure strings. Um, and then utility. So that's where you can create objects and create your own objects. Um, the management. So this is where you can do like a lot of remoting. Uh, and then you got your commands, your, uh, so this will be like clear host or anything towards like the output. We got some specific VS code because we're working in Visual Studio code. And then you got the PS read line as well. So these are all the basic ones. Now, if you wanted to see a list of modules that are currently available to you on your computer, if you do the get dash module dash list available, we will actually get a list of all the PowerShell modules that are currently installed. And they're actually going to be separated out by folder. So here we can actually see if we go to the top here. Uh, so in this directory in C program files, PowerShell seven modules, 
we have all of these modules. In C program files, Windows PowerShell modules, we have all of these modules. In the System32, we have all of these different modules. The System32 modules will have the modules like Scheduled Task, uh, Windows Update, Windows Search. Um, there might be some other ones that might be useful. Uh, BitLocker as well. Um, so these are some of the modules that you might uh, use quite often. VPN Client, if you're trying to maybe install a VPN on a bunch of different machines, you can push out a PowerShell command uh, that uses the VPN Client module. Um, and then we have the VS Code uh, modules as well. So that's how you would get a list of all the available modules that are currently installed on your computer. Now, let's say we wanted to import a module. Uh, we want to import the scheduled tasks because maybe we want to get the list of tasks or maybe even create a task um, using that module. So what we can actually do to import that module, you've probably already guessed, it's just the import dash module. And then we have a parameter called name. And then we could do a scheduled tasks. And we can actually import this. Now you won't see anything really happen on the screen. There won't be any confirmation that it's imported. But if we do a get module now, we will actually see scheduled task is in this list. So this is now a module that is currently loaded in my session. So what we can also do, if you remember the command let get command to get a bunch of commands, we can actually pass in um, a module here and let's pass in the scheduled task module. So here are all the different commands that we have available to us in the scheduled task uh, module. So if we wanted to know more, we can obviously do a get help on these um, commandlets to know how to use them or what they do, what parameters they take. But as we can already see, we have a get scheduled task, get scheduled task info. So if we just do a get scheduled task, so here are all the scheduled tasks that are on my machine. You're going to see a bunch of them um, because there are a bunch of default ones that are already on your computer that are constantly executing that come with Windows. But if you did have some custom ones that you built out yourself, they would also be in here. You could see the status of them, whether or not they're ready, running, or disabled. Uh, so you can see all that type of stuff. You can also create new scheduled tasks with this module. This video doesn't cover necessarily the scheduled task module, uh, but more so of just how to import the module and how to get that information so you can use it uh, yourself. And then the other thing is if you ever wanted to, uh, you don't really have to do this. I haven't had a situation where I've really had to do this, but if you ever have to remove a module from your current session, you can simply do a remove module scheduled task and this will remove it for you. So now if we do a get module, we should no longer see it. As you can see, it is gone. It is no longer loaded in it. So if I try to do a get scheduled task, it still does work um, because it is found in that list of modules. Um, but just be aware that you can remove modules uh, very easily with the remove module. You just won't see it loaded in your current session. Um, and now the only other thing that's really left for this is, let's say you get a module, uh, maybe a module that you've created yourself, which we will see that in a uh, future video. Uh, more in the intermediate series. Uh, after we learn how to create functions, we're going to see how to create our own modules. This is where the remove module really comes in handy because you might not necessarily install your module in a default location. Maybe you're just testing it in a folder. That's where the remove module will really come in handy. But if we ever did a import module and then we did a uh, name here, scheduled task, and then we added a dash force, this will say if the module is already imported, re-import it anyways, and this will update any functions that you may have changed or any functions that may have changed in the module. Maybe you installed a module from the internet um, and they've did, done some updates to it and you've updated your actual module and you need to import these new functions. Uh, you just do an import 
module and then force it. And this will just make sure that PowerShell will actually go in to the module and import all the new functions or update the functions that have been updated. Now you might be wondering where can I find these modules online? So there are two ways to do it. Um, one of the simpler ways is directly in PowerShell. We could do a find dash module. So let's find a module. I already know of one. Um, so we can have our Azure AD for Azure Active Directory. So if we do our find module here, we will actually get back something here. So we have our Azure AD module that comes back from the repository of PS Gallery. And that is the Azure Active Directory version two. Um, and then we can simply install it by using the install module and then name Azure AD. And then if we actually run this here, we will get prompted uh, because it is an untrusted repository. So it's asking, you are installing the modules from an untrusted repository. If you trust this repository, uh, change its installation policy value by running the set PS repository commandlet. Uh, so you can either set a trust or if you don't set the trust, you're always going to get this question. I prefer leaving this question on and then I just press an A for yes to all. And this will install the module. It usually doesn't take that long. It's usually fairly easy. And then we will have the module available to us for importing. So now if we do a get module, or if we just do a import module Azure AD, and we run this here, it seems to run correctly. And then if we do another get module, we should see our Azure AD module right here. So that does work correctly. Uh, so that is the first way to install a module from the internet. Of course, there is also a way to uninstall a module, which is just the uninstall module and then name and then Azure AD. And then you can uninstall a module as well. Now, the other way to uh, find, so if you do encounter this issue here, so um, the version is currently in use, retry after closing the application, that's because it is currently loaded. Uh, so if we do a remove module, Azure AD, and then we try to uninstall, we might have to run it as an administrator as well. Uh, yes, so you would have to um, just exit out of your Visual Studio code because I currently have it loaded in here um, and run your PowerShell 7 as an administrator and then uninstall it. Uh, the other way to also find modules would be on the internet. So you can use your uh, favorite browser. I just have Edge open here for now. Um, and then you can go to powershellgallery.com. And let's say if we look up Azure AD here, we find one at the top. So let's click on that. And here we have Azure AD V2 general availability module. And here's the installation options. So here's just that install dash module uh, dash name Azure AD. So you would just paste this into PowerShell, which is exactly what we did earlier. And you will be in, able to install the module. Now you'd actually also be able to see the list of files that it's going to be installing. Uh, you can also click on the different versions to see if you want to install a specific version. It'll also tell you the code for that as well. Uh, and there are tons of packages on here. Uh, there is a very popular package also, which is PS Windows Update, which lets you manage uh, the Windows Update through PowerShell as well. So that is very, very useful. Uh, there's a lot of desired state configuration modules in here as well. So you can definitely take a look at this. This is a very, very useful website to find uh, modules. There's everything from uh, maybe not necessarily on PowerShell Gallery, but also on GitHub. You can find a bunch of modules that you would just download and then copy into those uh, module paths and then just do an import module. Uh, but there's modules for VMware. There's modules for a bunch of different tools that you might be already using. 
uh, instead of writing them yourself and writing commands to APIs and writing your own modules, always be sure to always just look um, because there's Aruba, there's Cisco, there's HP modules, uh, VMware, as I mentioned, um, and a bunch more modules as well that can help you automate some different um, tools and some different hardware in your environment. So if we actually just go ahead and let's go and run PowerShell here as an administrator. And let's just close out of our VS code here. And let's just do an uninstall module name Azure AD. And just make sure that uninstall module, make sure I actually spell it correctly here. And then we're going to do a name and we're going to uninstall the Azure AD. And once we do that here, this should let us and there it is. It is now uninstalled. But now if we go back into uh, VS Code here. And we try to do an import module Azure AD. I just have to let the VS Code actually start up here. So once we do an import module Azure AD, we will see that the specified module Azure AD was not loaded no valid module file was found in any module directory. So because we uninstalled it, uh, we are not able to import it. So we would have to reinstall it. So just be sure if you're trying to uninstall a module, um, it is always best to do it directly through the PowerShell 7 uh, console. Definitely seems to work a lot better and run it as administrator. I would even recommend if you're trying to install a module, I would recommend installing it through the PowerShell 7 console as well and running it as administrator. Um, I did show it in Visual Studio Code. You can do it in Visual Studio Code, but if you do encounter any weird problems, I would run it in a administrator uh, console window of PowerShell 7, and that will work a lot better because you might need some administrator privileges for some of those modules. Um, where you could run Visual Studio Code as an administrator, um, but I would just recommend going directly into that console. It's a lot easier um, for those types of tasks. So that's pretty much it for the modules. I really wanted to add this into the beginner series. So I believe just installing and using pre-made modules is definitely helpful for beginners. Um, it just avoids having to write a lot of code to do things that are already out there. Uh, so we're going to be stepping into the intermediate um, section. Uh, so that will be a separate playlist. And we're going to start off with creating our own functions, creating our own methods and commandlets. And then we're going to actually see how to create our own modules. And then we're going to get into a whole bunch of other topics that are a lot more uh, intermediate slash advanced for PowerShell. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, please let me know in the comment section. If it's something specific, I will try to answer you directly. If it's something a little bit more uh, general, I will try to make a video this way. All the people can benefit from it. Thank you guys for watching the video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.